So up to this point, we've been working with products that have been simple, even though if we think about it, we should have made them a little more complex. What I mean is we've got cakes, and I've been selling, for example, a 13-inch anniversary cake, a 12-inch vanilla birthday cake. Uh, well, what if I could also have the capability to sell a 6-inch cake or you know, a 20-inch cake? And uh, over on pies, it's the same sort of thing. I've been selling them apple pie, 12 inch, and that may be too big. Maybe I only want the 6 inch apple pie. And now we're about to talk about cookies. And on that one, we'll, we'll address that issue of variations. Because I want to be able to sell cookies not one at a time. I want to sell them in batches. I want to sell them in either <clears throat> groups of 6, 12, or 24. And so those are variations. Think about it also in terms of clothing. I could be selling a particular shirt in small, medium, and large. They're all the same shirt, basically, but the variable is the size. We can be very complex with variables. I've dealt with a client, a restaurant, where they sell a combo meal. And honestly, that's a real pain to work with because you choose what kind of tortilla, you choose what kind of meat, you choose what kind of drink. Okay, three items. but I mean, three possibilities. But you have tortillas, either soft or hard. Then you have drinks, either water or, you know, the soda. And then when you get to the meat, you have either, you know, rib meat or, you know, thigh meat or breast meat, whatever. So that's three. So that's a lot of variations, technically. It's three times three times three. And so we have to go in and, and make all of those price changes, and it can get a little cumbersome. But you can be as complex as you want here. Let's go back to the dashboard if you're not there already. And let's go, we have to do it this way because um, I think it's easier. If you hover over products, let's go to the section variations. I think it's better to create your variation first and then attach it to a product. You can create a product and at that moment create variations. But I think it's better this way to think about it in these terms variations attached to a product. Click variations. Variations allow you to create options for your products. For example, if you're selling t-shirts, they will have a size option. You can create this as a variation. Size will be the variation set name, and it will be a new variant set. You will then create variants, which are small, medium, and large, which will have the variation set of size. Once you've made your set, you can use the table on the right to manage them and you will be able to order your variants by dragging and dropping them in the variation set. Okay, that sounds complex. Here's what's going on. We need one top-level organizational unit. Size, for example. Size could then include small, medium, large. One mistake that people make on the screen is we're about to make... we're about to talk about selling half a dozen or one dozen or two dozen cookies. So uh, eventually we're going to attach variations to cookies. And the mistake that people make here would be calling the variation set, don't do this yet, for example, cookie batch. The problem here is we're going to create cookie batch, or then we're going to create the variants of 6, 12, or 24. But wait a minute, 6, 12, or 24? I could sell 6 12 or 24 donut holes, 6, 12 or 24 um, cookie, um, what, are you, what do you call those cookies uh, that are on a stick, you know, little round cookie? Cake pops. cake pops, yes. I could be selling 6, 12 or 24 cake pops, 6, 12 or 24. They don't have to be attached to only cookie batch because then I'd have to create one called cake pop batch and another one called uh, donut hole batch, and then on each of those I'm going to have those variants, which I can just reuse. I'm going to sell many things that are either in 6, 12, or 24 batches. So the point is, if we're generic at this point, we can still apply it to specific products. I can even do a batch, 6, 12, or 24, I guess, of, you know, mini, mini cakes, you know, like two-inch size cakes or something. So if I simply call this 
um, super set batch. It'll, it'll work better, I believe. This is a variation set, and it's, um, it's a batch. Slug is just the web address for it, which fills itself in, don't worry about it. And then description, the description is not prominent by default, but a theme might show it. Um, don't worry about that one, because usually we never see it outside of the context of attached to a product. Um, then we got variation price. You can list a default price here for this variation, and you can list it as a regular price, differential price, or even a percentage. What this means is, let's say um, I've had this happen in the real world, but I think they fixed this bug. For this one client, there was a variation of selling tortilla soup, either 10 ounces or 20 ounces. And the bug was that the person was able to buy the soup without selecting 10 or 20 ounce. So if they don't select 10 ounce, which was $5, and 20 ounce, which was $7, if they didn't select any of those, what would the price of the product be? Free. It would be free because I never set a product. A, a base price. So, you know, the owner called us up and said, hey, uh, th this order came in that the tortilla soup was free. What happened? So we have to look into it. We saw that the plug-in, there was a little problem here, and now the latest version of the of the um, plugin does 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 not let you does not let a person buy a product with variation that they have not chosen a variation. I'm paranoid, so I would rather put a base price here just in case. So let's say if someone does not choose three, uh, does not choose six, twelve, or twenty-four cookies, there's still going to be some base price. I'm going to say three dollars. Put any regular price, three dollars twenty-five cents. I can put a differential, as in whatever the price is plus a dollar, minus two, or even percentage. It's fifty percent of another price. Um, these differential prices, to to me, don't make sense right now, but they will when we create the actual variant. But I'm saying this is the most basic price here, three dollars. Add new variation. What happens then at the top here? We've got a brand new item called batch. We will see that once we've got a cookie, we'll select batch. Maybe we should call it batch size. Quick edit that. Batch size. Everyone might not know the term what batch is, but this might make it more sense. Batch size. So here then, I'm going to go back and, and set this now parent batch size. Now I'm creating the sub-elements of this. You want a shirt, but do you want it small, medium, large? You want cookies, but do you want half a dozen, one dozen, two dozen? So here we'll say half dozen. Half dozen is going to be a variant of batch size. Slug, don't worry. Description, don't worry. Price. So half a dozen is six. I'm going to sell six cookies at a time for five dollars. Add a new variation. And now you'll see here that it's indented. Half a dozen is a variant of this variation group. Six dollars or five dollars for six. Next, I'll add another one in the parent variant. In the parent variation, I'm going to add the variant one dozen. Obviously, I can word this however I want. I'm using whole words, so one dozen. So for 12 cookies, I'm going to say I will sell them for, I don't know, 10, 25, 10, 50. Add new variation. Depending on your product, these prices may or may not make sense economically. You have to decide how you're going to do these variations. I'm giving a bit of an incentive in that, let's say my basic cookie is worth $1. 
but when you buy them in batches, you save a little bit to entice people to buy more. So you give people the uh, incentive, the theory that they're going to save more by spending more, which I never understood, but people fall for it yeah, all, the all the time. So we're going to keep we're going to keep uh, tricking them here. Now we'll do uh, two dozen. Dozen, two dozen. Does I need a dash? Two dozen. A two dozen dash. Two dozen. Yeah. Two dozen. The batch is two dozen, and okay, they cost a dollar each. Two dozen twenty-four. Well, I'm just gonna entice them with a twenty-three dollar, so a dollar discount. But you buy more and you save more. We'll say twenty-three. Add new variation. So now I've got my batch size, which could apply. Notice, out of context, this still makes sense. Two dozen cookies, two dozen cake pops, two dozen, um, you know, Fig Newton bars. Doesn't matter. This can be applied to anything that can have these variations. And then the price can still be manipulated, because right now, it's whatever I put, $5, $6, $12. Uh, I can still edit them at the moment that I attach them to a product. That's why I wanted to talk about variations fresh because this is kind of complex. Question? Um, as far as the spelling uh, with the batch, that's not what your customer will see, right? They will. Oh, they will see. Yes, what you write here is what will appear for people next to the drop-down menu. We're going to see cookies, mm -hmm. and then next to the drop-down menu it'll say batch size, and then it'll say two dozen, one dozen, half dozen, choose one. Do we have um, batch as the parent, just the word batch, or do we have batch size as well? I did go on the left right here. Um, I at first, well, I first wrote it as batch, but then I went to quick edit and changed it to batch size because I think that makes a little bit more sense to people, perhaps. Is there a way to have a quick overview of the prices at which it's entered so we have it on Windows? You know what? There isn't, and, and that's a little annoying. You do have to do quick, uh, not even quick edit, you do have to do edit. To, to go to the screen where you actually see its price. In this screen, we won't see that. But once we attach it to the product, we will be able to see one long price list. So in this screen, we can't, but on the next screen, we will. So let's confirm here. We've got uh, the variation set, the parent element, child elements, variance, half dozen, one dozen, two dozen. Do you want to have that? So once we've got that part, it's in two parts. We create variations and then we attach variations. That's what we're about to do. Let's try this. Half dozen, one dozen, and two dozen. So not everyone needs to do variations, but if you need to, this is pretty valuable, pretty powerful. So I've got my, my setup here, and I can create many more if I, as I want. More parents, more children elements, as many as I want. They will all be listed here in count, so I can quickly see what what products have been attached to what variation. The way we attach it is now we'll go to uh, products, add new product. Product will be chocolate chip cookie. Just write something whatever in the description. And 
and then here is the big difference from before. Instead of adding a product price here, because it would be a simple product, we have a product with variations. So under the variations, right below your description, you've got variations, manage and setup. We first need to set up a variation. Notice in this screen, we could create our variants just like in the screen previously, but I kind of don't like the screen because there's other stuff going on here, product specific stuff. Here it shows you've got a variant set of batch size. And if you click the triangle, inside of those, you've got these particular items. So per product, you don't have to add all of these. Let's say I'm selling a kind of cookie that I only sell in one and two dozens. So I wouldn't have to select it. Let's say that on this particular product, I do want my three variations. The easy way is just select the first check box of batch size. It will automatically select half, one, and two dozen. I'm going to use all those three variations, those three possibilities of my product. Click Generate Variations. What happens then is it jumps you here to the tab of Manage. Set them up and manage them. So here I'm seeing half a dozen, one dozen, two dozen, and all the prices, all my base prices right here. I could individually craft this as much as I want, adding a picture for each particular variation of this product a skew for each of these. I can change my prices here. Maybe I no longer want these prices. My base prices started off like this a year ago, but now after you know the minimum wage change, I need to increase my prices a little bit to recuperate that. So no problem. I can go back in and add a few cents here and there. Do I need any of these on sale? I can add that. Or any of these uh, stock limited? I can do that. And taxable amount uh, if I'm going to be adding tax individually per product. So these prices are fine, 5, 10, 50, and 23. I'm simply going to click Save Variations. Because now those variations have been added to this product. Also because I'm paranoid. Just in case, I would still add a price here. Even though supposedly my other variation screen had a base price, $3, and here I've added these prices that account for what I'm selling, there could be a bug that a person does not select a variation and somehow gets it to the shopping cart, the price would be free. So just to be safe, I'm just going to set it at 5 because I think really that's my lowest possible price, obviously. At the very top right, I will then scroll back up and publish. Visit site. Under my shop, I've got cookies. Click there, I've got... Oh, before we publish. It's not in my cookies page because I didn't add it to my cookies category. I forgot to do this. Description, variations, category. I forgot to put it into my cookies category. It's in product, so it would show up if you go into the main shop. You'd have to scroll to find it. But you want to, I'm going to leave it in product category and also in, um, now put it in cookies. Now I'll save it. Now I'll visit my site and, and view the cookie page, and it should show up. see so back to visit site to the shop to cookies it is chocolate chip cookie I put the term batch size as my variation 
as my variation main price, main, main name. Starting from $5, that's the lowest price in my variation group. Please select. I go with half dozen. $5. Go with one dozen, $10.50. And two dozen, $23. So we'll take, we'll take a short break to see if this works for everyone. When we come back, we'll add another product and explore how else we can further use variations because this worked great for this product, but I might have a special kind of cookie that needs a few extra details as well. So we'll look at that. But if this works great, we'll take a break. It's uh, 137. We'll be back at 147, and uh, we'll go on.